this girl didn't have my back. So I walked away. And when I did, I mourned the loss of that. Like I did my ex-husband, but this one I did in writing. I just wrote it. I just like, I'm letting you go. I'm letting you go because this feels wrong. And then I started walking. I was always very full of energy, but I don't remember not this much. So I just started walking. We have a forest near the house where I live. And so every day I would get out and I would go walking. And then I started realizing that as I walked, it was like my thoughts went away. It was like ideas came to me. So I started making it a practice to where I would go out and I would walk fast, which I do anyway. And it was like the first mile, it was like free for all. After the first mile, I said, okay, thoughts, scoop, scoop, scoop. And the thoughts would scoot away and then I would keep them away. And I would be just so present and looking at the trees, the bees, the squirrels, the flowers, everything around me. And then soon it was like, I, I'll never forget the day I kept walking and walking and walking. And I walked fast. It was like my fit. It was, it was a Nike fuel band or something, 13 miles. And my hips were so achy. <laughs> I think I needed an oil can. So I decided to head home, but it was like, they, it was the most productive time of my life is just, just walking and being present. And through work, I was a radio personality in Washington and I had a contest winner and she won. And frequently I would offer to meet them if it was a far distance to the station, if they were near me to give them their prize package. And in this particular case, we agreed to do it. And there was something about this woman. I stalked her Facebook page. She stalked mine. It was like, who is this woman? She had crystals and talked about chakras and all this stuff that I was clueless about. And so one day we connected and it was like, who is this masked woman? Many won't even get that reference. Hmm, dating. Um, so anyway, it was just, it, it was the shift for me because at one point she just said she had a book for me. And I said, I don't have time to read. I don't sit and I'm always commuting. So she said, get audible. I downloaded the book and that moment cracked open Pandora's box. That was my aha moment. That was my waking up moment. Because once I started listening to the words of this book, it was Abraham Hicks, Money and the Law of Attraction, just one general law of attraction book. What I realized down the road, and I have a book list that I will attach, I will attach, I'm trying to attach it. This is the stuff that was the, the downloads that I got. So listening to this book, and then the next book, and then Eckhart Tolle is the power of now. Each book, it wasn't like I read it and heard it and thought, oh, I'm going to practice that. It was literally as if, and now I'm in open mode too, I'm in surrender. It was as if a big old flash drive went and literally downloaded all of the information within me. I went from thinking things to where there was things I knew. That's when you go from a belief to a known. You know, you start knowing. When I listened to Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, it was the third book that I listened to. And I remember hearing his very soft voice. It was like, nobody can be like this dude. But literally when a friend called me and said, hey, do you miss your daughter? And she'd been gone for 11 days to Washington, DC. And I'm like, <laughs> I feel like a bad mom, but nope, haven't thought about her. He said, no, you're just present. And it was like, Ooh, this, like this whirlwind comes through me, like being present, just download. It was like, I became the book. So every book that I listen to, we're talking from quantum physics. Okay. I don't like same with church quantum physics. I've read a lot. I'm really understanding a bunch of it, but can I have a logical conversation with you about quantum physics? <laughs> no. Um, I know what I've read and I understand all of the concepts. So all of these books that I've listened to, I've read, they have become downloads and the way that it feels is like, say, um, I, there's just so many categories, so many topics, like pre-birth planning. It's like, I've read, I've listened to a lot of different versions of that, but it's like, I, I understand that whole lane of pre-boot birth planning now. So I can talk to you about, I can answer all your questions. The same with like soul groups, just all of that. It's like, I can understand it easily. Cause I, it's been downloaded. I, I don't know just one person's version of it. It's like, I've been downloaded with who we are. It's like, I, I, I know it now. I know it now. And I don't know church because in this lifetime, I can't relate to that. So these books kept going. And as these books were coming to me, my life was unfolding and it came to Carolyn Mays. I feel, I talk about her a lot because she was like the final part of my journey when she's talking about having to get through the really dark, dark, dark parts, the part, what I talk about when I talk, it's about so many people that I've been on this journey with, they get to this point to where they have that hard decision to make that 
that line in the sand that they refuse to cross, that I need to leave Bessie, I need to leave Leroy, and they won't do it. It's like, okay, guys, this is a journey. There's a reason for it. I mean, how do you know what happens next? And do you come back? You don't know because you're parking your spirit. So I keep saying, don't park your spirit. That's the thing that most people do, and I have never done. And this is why my journey is different. I have never stopped saying yes to what comes to me. So the books came to me. I said, oh, hell yes. And so I listened to every one of the books. And then I had an opportunity to live by myself for a year and spend time completely alone. And I just turned inside and I have gone within. And since I've gone within, when I moved to Olympia, my nightstand light started, light started coming on in the middle of the night. It was like, Within a few months, I realized my friend Barry had passed and he was coming through to me. It's like this stuff started happening. I started surrendering again. I started opening up again and I started connecting to that side because we're all connected. We're all connected, but we are so bogged down with the world and whatever, everything that's going on in the world. We can't even begin to connect with ourselves. There's too much noise out there. But I said yes to this, to the quiet, to the stillness. And no, to this, there are no notifications on my phone now. If somebody calls me, if there's a voicemail, if there's a text message, if I WhatsApp messages, anything, there's no notifications on my phone because I can't have that. I need old school. Like if I want to send somebody a letter, I actually wrote a letter to somebody the other day and actually went to the bank and made a deposit at the bank because I don't have the app on this phone for my new bank. It's like, I want to go back to the way it was back to when we wondered what people were doing. We don't have to know what everybody's doing, what they're eating, what they're, you know, where they're doing it or what their selfie looks like. We don't need to know all that stuff. And so I've been drawn back to this space to where I don't do any of that. I post on Facebook because I need to, but I don't hang out there. I can't, I even deleted Snapchat. I can't do this stuff anymore because it so disconnects us from who we are. So I continued on this journey. And I've gone through some monumental shifts. Literally, I have written, I have two books. <laughs> I've got to find the time. I have to be told when to do it, when to finish them. One of them is a magical story of when I went to Sedona, Arizona, completely by myself because a friend of mine had a magical and mystical experience. And I went there with no expectations, with no plans. I went there and I begged God. I said, clarity now, just clarity that trip changed my life. <laughs> wow. That's, this is my first book. I met somebody on that trip and my life has changed forever. And this person became my connection to divine, something that I never knew existed because I never went to church. And then I started having conversations with the other side and I started seeing signs, clear signs from the other side. And this entire time I'm alone. I'm not having conversations with non-believers or people that question it. I'm saying yes to everything. I'm completely alone. I am a hermit. I have nothing to lose, but to surrender and say yes. In doing so, it has brought me to where I've actually met on the date one, two, two, one, two, one. I don't know the significance. I was dropped to my knees in a puddle of death for 20 minutes and something happened with me. I was infused with something, a download, a shift, something. Fast forward to one, one, two, two, two. I met God. And then I realized God has been with me this whole time. God walked me through showing me how he has turned my life around and kept me alive and all the reasons why he's kept me alive. And now I'm here to do God's work. And there's so much more to this story, but I don't want to make it go forever and ever. But there's so many people that don't know who to attach to. I'm just saying the only one you need to attach to is yourself. You need to shut everything down. You've got to everything. Put your phone away. You do not need guided meditations. You don't need anything to be quiet. What do you love? Do you love gardening? Go garden in silence. Do you love the ocean? Go to the ocean in silence and just be there and do this time and time again. And when, just be silent. Don't listen to anything. When thoughts, the to-do list comes through, give it time and then say, okay, scoot, scoot, scoot. and then just allow. 
And when you start having thoughts come through you that you know aren't yours, you know you're listening to your higher self. We are always connected to all that is. But because I carry, have got through everything I came on this planet to get through, I've been in complete surrender. I've said yes to everything, everything. Since I've done that, there's no more boxes for Carrie to check. Like she got through this last thing she had to get through the lesson. So that's why I'm in this space now to where I get to have a vacation life and I get to change lives. That's all I need to do. And I get to be in the right place at the right time and drop, drop the right nugget for the right person. And if that's my website is the whole tideline is changing the world by planting one seed at a time. I'm not there to see the growth, the growth happen, but I'm there to plant the seed. And that's all that matters. <laughs> I'm Johnny freaking Appleseed. <laughs> anyway, so I just know how good it feels to be here when I started saying no in my marriage to things that I've always said yes to, because that's what we do as humans. When you really come from your gut and you realize that I really don't want to do that. Why am I saying yes? Because we think we're supposed to. Why? Who told us this? Why did we say yes to this crap? I don't get it. But I started saying no to the things I said yes to, which totally threw everything off kilter. And then I started following my arrow. I started following my guidance, which is my gut pointing me in the direction that I wanted to go. And only my gut knows. And the fun part about this, the way that this can happen for you and you will just go there and you will stay there is if you truly surrender, you just say, show me the way. And you're willing to do whatever it takes. Because guess what? None of this is real. You came here to do something. And then once you do the whatever it takes, as hard as it is, you'll see why you did it. But you won't know because you don't get to, you don't get to have a plan. Like what happens when you do that icky thing? You don't get to be shown the good stuff at the other end. You got to put on strap on your man balls and just do it. Man or woman, just do it. And then you see why. This is what we planned. This is why we came here to get through the hard stuff. So I got through all my hard stuff. And so now I'm done. And now I get to just relax and have a vacation and help others get here. But you can, you can, we all can. If I carry from Henderson, Nevada, Hooterville, if I could do this against all the odds that I had, I just said yes. The good part is, when you start seeing the miracles of life, you start seeing miracles right before your eyes and you feel such blessings, you feel such a gift, you feel so much gratitude and you're just so grateful. So the miracle happens, you're full of love, you're full of gratitude and you're completely in surrender and following guidance because that's all God wants is just love and happiness and putting it all out there, you do that you're going to get miracle after miracle after miracle because then you're full of gratitude and you give more of what you think about that's law of attraction and that's why my life has become so blissful because i am so grateful every day for the miracles placed before me every single day and because i'm grateful and i'm saying thank you and i'm so full of love and i'm a servant i'm willing to do whatever it takes i just keep getting more of the same so yeah, I highly recommend this life. Um, you can get here any way you need to. Just don't latch on to any one guru, any one teacher. The only one you need to listen to, you, you're carrying with you. You're carrying with you. The reason this works so well now is because Carrie the human, who now has got through everything, now gets to just relax while, while her higher self, who is connected to you and to all that is, is able to drive this bus. We just need to remember to make sure she likes conditioner in her hair and always brush teeth with toothpaste. It's just little details, but it's like, it's a marriage that's working out wonderfully. It is. She just gets to relax and be free. And one day soon she'll be back in her studio, but we're here to help her wake you up. And it, all it is, is you just shutting down everything that's coming at you all the voices, all the beliefs, all the stuff you're taught, all the stuff you've been told, say no to all of it. Close your eyes, go inside. Because you, your higher self, is the only one that could possibly know you. And you know that. So why do you keep going outside of yourself? You're the only one that knows. <laughs>